So I haven't really had uh, like a solid plan for this trip yet. That's why I haven't mentioned it, <laughs> what we're doing. But it's kind of uh, taking shape. I'm gonna start in Iowa, but I wanna show you some places in Iowa that, well, I actually haven't really seen them either. Um, there's an area called the Driftless Region. It's northeastern Iowa. And uh, we will talk more about this when I get up there and I'll probably find placards and maybe I'll do a little research to, to give it some, you know, give it some uh, proper context. But it's basically this area that the glaciers back in the day uh, did not reach. And so it's very hilly. It has a different geography of a lot of the rest of the Midwest, especially this part of the Midwest. And it's kind of tucked up in there between... Minnesota, the Mississippi River, Northeast Iowa and Wisconsin. And uh, I just, lots of little towns. It's one of those, it's kind of a magnet area for people who are consciously, what would you call it? Like maybe intentional communities and just wanting to live in small towns and communities. And it's, it, it seems to be one of those areas that kind of draws like-minded people. That's, that's what I've heard. That's kind of the feeling I've gotten a couple times I've just passed through there. So the only way to really find out is just to go find out for yourself. Ask folks, look around, you know, pay attention. So so uh, hopefully you can hear me here. It's kind of a little bit windy, but it feels good. Um, yeah, so we're going to go up there. We, every Anytime I'm in Iowa, I always stop in and see Barry from Extreme Budget. We're going to stop in there tonight and visit with him for a day. Maybe we'll, I'll turn the camera on for a minute or two uh, and show you what he's up to. And... And yeah, a couple more ideas I have on this trip. So I think this is going to be a worthwhile couple of videos to watch, even if you're just here for the shanty boats and the and the boating trips and stuff. Every once in a while, we got to take a break, jump on two wheels, go take a look around, aimlessly wander for no good reason. So <laughs> watch you guys just stay tuned and see what happens. What is this? Let's go take a look. We've got a couple placards telling us what this is. So, District 6 School. This 1.1 acre site represents the history of public education in rural United States. It was one of it was one of 68 rural school districts organized in Nicolet County. The first school building on this site was built in the early 1860s. The present building built in 1929 was the third schoolhouse and classes were discontinued after the 1957-1958 year. The site was transferred to the new Sweden Township in 1963. It was used as a town hall for voting and community use until 2003. The property was transferred to the Friends of the District 6 Association in 2011 to be used for history, education, and community use. Old schoolhouse. And then it says the same thing on the back. Old water pump. This placard says the New Sweden Creamery Association was organized in 1895, located one mile southwest of the site. 300 cows were pledged for the creamery. Sam Hogdahl, manager, was awarded world champion butter maker of the Grand Prix d'Honneur at the International Exposition in Paris, France in 1900. Many dedicated managers and directors provided leadership for the patrons. Throughout the years, the Creamery Hall hosted social events and strain, oh, I'm sorry, stage, stage plays for District 6 students and local 4-H. The original building was replaced in 1924. The Creamery was dissolved in 1979. I love these little random roadside attractions. I hope you guys do too. <laughs> Back in the box, Beagle. I don't know if you like it. Or don't. You don't seem to mind it. There you go. That's not bad. Let's 
check out an abandoned house real quick. Hopefully it's abandoned. We're gonna make this one quick because still got a ways to go tonight and I wanna get to Barry's house before dark, so let's just peek around for a second. I think it has a note on the door. It says, no, it's locked up. No, oh, I, I don't know. I can't read it, but it doesn't. It, I mean, it's probably abandoned, but it's probably owned by one of the neighboring farmers. It happens a lot. Sometimes you can tell with the license plate, 2020. It's not that long ago. This one's 2021, so. Yeah, probably no one's living here, but I'm not, I don't like breaking into, I, I, let's just say I won't break into places. Let's keep going. So much of Iowa is just flat, it's really easy to kind of just pick a road and start heading to general direction. Sometimes it turns to gravel and then it'll turn back to pavement again and it might cross a busy intersection and then just turn into gravel again. It's, it's a really fun way to kind of poke around if you're not in a hurry and you don't, you don't have a need to know exactly where you are because, you know, you can always just figure it out again, stop and look at a map or whatever. That's kind of what I'm doing this morning. I'm just kind of heading in the general direction of east. Then sometimes this happens. You're just cruising down the road and come to the end, you have to turn around and find the next one to go through. So we'll try this one. You're cruising along these gravel roads, right? You're not seeing anybody, and then you just all of a sudden come across I-35. <laughs> just the main thoroughfare that goes basically from Canada to Mexico, and you just cross over this indescript little bridge, and you're right back on the gravel again. So one thing I love about Iowa, it's just, it's like rural, 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 and then every once in a while it just gets, you know, you get reminded of the urban world, and then it just goes right back to rural again. Just like a, a bunch of small towns connected by little two-lane roads. As we're uh, we're walking around town here, the town of Roland, it's giving the beagle some exercise, and came across this interesting old building it says Marshall Canning Company and it looks like can't get close to it it's fenced off but maybe we'll walk around and get a couple different angles I talked to the lady who lives across the street from that building there Got the little 411, small town 411. Sounds like a, a fella owns the building and that one front section, they actually make something in there, wrestling mats. And then the rest of the building that's usable, he puts his, she said, his toys in there, I'm guessing like boats and, you know, snowmobiles and stuff like that. Uh, and I said, well, would you, can I just turn the phone on you for 20 seconds and you could tell us? And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, oh, well, some people don't like to be on camera. I know that. She's like, it's not that. I just can't stand that guy. <laughs> so 
<laughs> just reminds me that every every little town I live in, there's always these rivalries. Sometimes I've even been part of them, you know. And uh, and every little town has them. There's always just these like small town politics and people who like each other and don't and the dramas and the traumas and stuff and I guess the trick is just not to take them personally just they're just entertainment <laughs> as long as they don't get out of hand okay guys we're gonna get back on the road we got a long way to go to get to the driftless so stay tuned back in the box you don't mind it as much as you would like us to think sit back there and snore I've caught you snoring back road here and we saw this poking out over the trees this old wooden church with a really neat spire so I thought we'd stop for a couple minutes and I'll let's see what we can learn about it if anything I'm not sure what this little town is called but I will look it up and put it on the screen here when I edit but it's Grundy and Gundy County I think just went through Gundy Center which looks like a kind of a main town of the area yeah, I got this old wooden church <clears throat> that looks like it has some has some history to it. Of course, we've got the outhouse. We've got a classic car. Anybody know what that is? It says Ford on the emblem. It's a four door, probably from the forties. Yeah, the roof is, they're not even keeping up on the roof, which tells us that eventually this church is going to cave in. Probably in the next 10 years, maybe five. I just looked across the street and there's the Grundy County Museum. It's probably not open today, it's Sunday, but let's walk over here and at least take a look on the outside. Old Prairie Settler's Cabin. You know, this little sign over here it says Peck Log Cabin, built in 1853 by William Peck near what is now the town of Dyke began construction in August and moved his family into the cabin in October. He was a copper or barrel maker by trade. He is credited as the first permanent white settler in Grundy County. <clears throat> the cabin was moved to Roadman Park in 1966, moved again to the museum grounds in 1979 and restored. All but three of the logs are original. The floors, windows, shutters, doors, and furnishings are as things probably looked like when Mr. Peck and his family lived here. Wow. And he built it in two months. Imagine that. 
probably all those cedar shingles on the roof made those by hand amazing it's stuff like that that always reminds me of all the stuff that myself and most people take for granted in this modern world you know i can just jump on the scooter blast off another 50 miles down the road and when i get thirsty i just stop and get some water when i'm hungry i just buy some food <laughs> <laughs> These guys were just working 24 hours a day, every single person. Oh, we got it pretty good and easy. It's, it's, this modern world is such a, such a paradox. It's such a, it's a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a, well, it's confusing. Some ways it's hard, some ways it's easy. <laughs> it's a topic that I'll bring up some other time on the other channel. But for now, let's keep looking around. We're about 50 miles south of Decorah, Iowa, just getting into the Driftless area. And I saw a sign saying camping in a little park. So we pulled in here and this is a tent camping area. There's a couple other people over here. I'm not gonna aim the phone at them, but uh, hopefully the music in the background is not gonna get this video demonetized. <laughs> but yeah, it's got a, got a little lake over there and a, and a river. And no one, I haven't even seen a sign yet that says like how much it costs or anything. So I'm just going to assume it's 20 bucks or if no one even bothers to ask me, I'm just going to call it free. So go ahead and uh, unload the bike and set up a tent and get back with you in a little bit. So Wavy Gravy's already making her little spot. I brought an old comforter. To lay on. I actually do not have a sleeping bag right now. Yeah, I brought a sheet because I knew it was going to be warm enough to just use a sheet. And there we go. Okay guys and gals, so I was picking the right roads apparently and we came to a little town called Claremont and it's the kind of town I was thinking of that I wanted to kind of showcase for you guys to convey what this area is like, this, this driftless region, how it has these little special small towns and such. So I'm going to go into full-blown host mode. And Wavy, who's tied to me right now, <laughs> is going to go into full-blown star mode. And uh, we're going to look around. I'm going to give you a deep dive in this little town called Claremont. Which is not the only town in this area that's special, but it's, it's a good example of it. So, let's do it. So here's an old bank. And I don't know if you can see this. I'll try to zoom in on it. It says, We invite your patronage. <laughs> it's it's ground into the stone there. Kurt Brothers Savings Bank. Oh, something else up here. It says, we believe in your cooperation. Well, that's very nice of them. So one thing is, you know, they haven't torn down all the old buildings. I've noticed that they're they consider themselves to be the you know the brick city and I'm sure there's that they're not the only ones right but uh, there is a lot of brick I mean most of the buildings in this this main downtown area if you want to call it that the old downtown is made of bricks and and they haven't torn them down you know they, they didn't modernize right so so that gives it some old character some old world character it's almost like living in a museum and I've, always, I, I've often thought that, you know, towns, that will give a town a certain type of feel when it has a lot of the old architecture left that wasn't torn down and, 
and redone and monetized, you know, modernized, right? So, so that's one thing to expect if you ever come to one of these little towns here in the Driftless region. Uh, but I'll turn the phone around. I'll kind of give, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here would be an example of, you know, all the brick buildings. That one's brick. That one's brick. That's an old brick building. Looks like it got turned into a pizza place. Here's another brick building, brick building. Most of the buildings, including this Claremont Historical Museum, we'll see if it's open here in a second. It's made out of brick. And the Turkey River goes through here, which is a, you know, it's a, it's a year round, fairly decent sized little river. It always helps when you find one of these. This building says 1917, you know, to give us an idea of when this town was established. That's the post office over there, which is a cinder block building. This is an interesting building. It's kind of old and not restored. Gibson Manor Hunt Club bunkhouse. And then it looks like there's maybe like a little, well it says trading post, but that just might be a fancy word for antique shop or something. Let's go check it out. Yeah, it's kind of like a it's actually one of the better ones. I like antique shops. Some of them are basically just a glorified yard sale and other ones are, have a lot of good stuff. This looks, looks like one of the more interesting ones. Obviously, an old one. Okay, guys, I found something. I bought it. Let me show you. I love old potato sacks. This one. Northern Flight Potatoes. I'm going to find a place to put that. Oh, well... <laughs> So guys, this, this nice lady is going to tell us all about the history of the straight story. I don't know much about it. I saw the movie a long time ago. I probably should watch it again. But she knows a lot about it. She met a lot of the folks that had something to do with the making of the movie and the story. I guess it's based on a true story. So let's see what we can learn. Yeah. There's no history. You can't even see in it. I know, it's all fogged up. So the red tractor is from the, the movie? Right. I don't know what the John Deere one is. I can't tell you. Well, there it is, if you can read it. Mm -hmm. it. Says Richard Farnsworth, Sissy Spacek, and it was a winner of some awards, The Straight Story. Yeah. I need to remind myself. I need to go watch it again. You were telling me a little bit back at the shop what your your connection was with it. Can you tell us a little more? Okay, we were on a bus trip, and when we got home, it was almost done filming. But I had an, the antique store then, and the the um, lady that was dating Richard Farnsworth at the time, Jewel Van Balen from Solbank, California, came in the store, and she bought some things from me that I had to mail to her and we became really good friends. Another lady had come through the store quite often from um, California, and 
Jewel said, if you ever get a chance, come to Solvang and visit me. So this other lady said, you fly on out to LA and I'll take you to Solvang. So I was privileged to go visit with Jewel in Solvang. We went to the Presbyterian Church and then we went to Daniel Boone, who is who? We went to, to the restaurant and ate with her and it was a lovely day. Did you get to meet Richard Farnsworth? Um, not one on one. No. But you saw maybe when they were no. filming or? Well, they went home the, two days later. Oh, they filmed so, really quick, huh? They filmed I the movie quick? I got to see a little bit of the filming one night. Hmm. And that was it. Neat. I got to see a tiny bit of the filming, but I did become very good fans of Jewel. Hmm. Neat. Thanks for telling us about that. Yes, it's a, a fun time in my life. Yeah.